Hi, my name is Jennifer Hartley, and I am the author of the Citizen Science EcoSpot. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps uh, that you would take to set up a localized citizen science project for, say, a schoolyard or for a community event. Um, I'm assuming, if you're watching this video, that you are already familiar with this platform. This is iNaturalist, and that you have already created an account logged in and possibly even created some observations. Um, the convention that we're going to be looking at today is under the community tab and it's something called projects. Okay. Projects are a way to take the enormous database that is iNaturalist and filter it down to only observations that are relative to something we want to know. So researchers commonly create these kinds of projects to filter through all of the observations in iNaturalist to get at organisms that they're studying or regions maybe where they're trying to evaluate biodiversity. Um, and as you can see, there are lots of different projects available. So to get a kind of a feel for them, one thing you can do is certainly come to this page and look through it to see what's here. Um, the featured ones, they are some great examples. Uh, these, this first one here is filtered by the type of media that's provided. As you can see down here, there's a number of them that are filtered by location. So these are all city nature challenge projects that will be biodiversity inventories for different cities around the world. Uh, you can filter by the type of organism. So in this project, it's only observations of mammals in California. So there's a lot of flexibility with this. And if you're just getting started, one thing you might want to do is do a search for something that's important to you. So I happen to live in St. Louis, so searching for your location is always a great place to get started. There are lots of options that will probably pop up. Okay, you're welcome to take a look at any of the ones that come up. I'm going to click on Biome STL because it's a currently active project and it's one that I helped put together. Uh, this has been around for a while. It's also very, very large. So don't be intimidated by the fact that there's this many observations. Uh, this project actually encompasses about eight counties and that's why there are so many. Um, but like most projects, it has a banner, it has, you know, you can customize the imagery here, you can come customize this text, um, and underneath there's some statistics that'll help you kind of gauge how your project's doing. Recent observations are always nice to see as well as how recently they've been entered. And every project has these leaderboards. Now, not every project you'll want to do, whether it's with students or the community, need to have a competitive flavor to them. Uh, but teachers, I, I know, have used this to incentivize participation and to kind of like get some mojo going with enthusiasm and engagement. So it can be kind of fun to build that in. Uh, but they'll be here regardless, just as reference. The most observed species is also interesting. It is a little bit of a temperature read into what organisms are more common than others. But really what this is showing you are which organisms are more obvious to people than others. So you can kind of look at this and say, okay, everyone, it's been great, but we have enough bees. So let's try to look a little deeper, try to get a little more, uh, try to look for species that maybe aren't right in front of your face all the time. Um, so that might help build in some more diversity into your observations. But down here, you can see what the actual filters are. They're being used by this particular project. Most of them are unset. The only criteria that we used for this one was the location and the quality grade. So the rest of these are all set to the default. However, you can change any of these to shape your project however you like. Um, in our case, you can see the map down below shows the geographical region, those where the borders are. Um, and we elected in our case to eliminate the casual qualities. We didn't want to have incomplete observations or observations of things that weren't really part of the ecosystem. So no domesticated animals, no house plants, no aquarium fish, that sort of thing. There is a journal that's associated with it where you can post updates or you can, um, you know, basically kind of communicate with your users. It is important to note that in addition to being this incredible database, iNaturalist is also a social media platform. So if you are working with students and they are under the age of 13, you're going to want to keep COPPA laws in mind and take steps to make sure that you have permission for the students to be on the platform. 
But that's a pretty typical project uh, to make your own. Of course, we'd go back to projects and you'll see there is a button here that says start a project. Now, before I actually do that, though, because most schoolyard and community based uh, projects are going to be geographically defined, we need to do one other thing first, and that's come here to the more drop down and click on places. Uh, places are defined areas with on the map that define exactly where uh, what observations fall into the project and which ones do not. Lots of them are predefined. So a lot of municipalities, a lot of government districts, that sort of thing are already in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in Benton Park and do a search as if I wanted to do a bio blitz in Benton Park. And you'll notice that it goes through a search and it gives me these two options. We have Benton Park here in Missouri and Benton Park in Iowa. Well, I'm in Missouri, so I'm going to click on that first one and see if that is the park that I'm thinking of. And yay, it is. So if that's the case for you, if you go and search for your schoolyard and it's already defined, you can go right back and make your project and you can use that place. If, for example, I wanted to do it at the Compton Reservoir Park, the search. Okay, so there is a conservation area and I can click on that, but that is not in the city. So that's not the same one. Just put Compton in and see. Okay, so it looks like Compton Hill Reservoir Park is not currently listed as a place. So in that case, I have to create it and this can be a little bit tricky. Now I can click here to add a new place. Uh, if you arrive at, on the places landing page, there's also a link down here where you can add it. So I'm going to click that and you're going to see this very scary warning banner. What this is telling you is that when you add, when, when users add a ton of new places to iNaturalist, it slows their processors way down. So they really caution users against making places that are very large um, or not taking care to check first to see if your place is already defined. Uh, we already did the check. And the place we're looking at is not particularly big. So we're going to go ahead and create our place. I'm going to put in Compton Hill Reservoir Park. We need to think of a parent. So the way, the best way to think about this is to think about what the next government level would be above whatever you're doing. So in my case, it would be St. Louis City. And it will filter the list down for you so you can easily find what you're looking for. And then it's asking me for a KML file. So that can be a little confusing because most of us don't deal in KML files a lot, but it's actually not very hard to make one. Okay, Google Earth is one of the most amazing tools for lots of reasons. You do need a Google account to use it, but for our purposes, you'll just want to zoom in here to the place that you're looking for. And I'm going to find Reservoir Park. Just going to be right over here. Now, if I needed to, I could use this search right here to find what I need. But of course, my park is right here. It's pretty easy to see from up above. So what we want to do is we want to create a KML file from this. And down here in the corner, you have some project tools that are really easy to use. I want to use this line tool. and I mean, this is very convenient because I have a city block, but we just want to draw a shape around the park. Now, this is just a little curve, so I'm going to kind of follow that curve and then come down here and close it off. Okay, so I'm making a KML file. My project is going to be called the Compton Hill Reservoir Park, and I'm going to click Save. Now, usually it's going to pop out a project view. After all, you can go ahead and name that as well. Why it does that, I'm not entirely sure. But I always just put a name in, click the arrow, and now I can see my shape. So what I want to do is come up here to this three-dot menu and notice that it wants to export, aha, as a KML file. So I click that. The file downloads. It usually takes a couple of seconds. It's really not a very big file. Then I can come back to iNaturalist. Click choose file, go to my downloads, actually it's right there, and click on Compton Hill Reservoir Park and click open. Okay, so the file's right there. I'm going to put this as an open space, uh, but you could 
choose other things as well. There, you know, this is what you put here is not super important other than it's just sort of indicative of what you're doing. And a lot of these terms are going to be a little bit confusing. So I'm going to put that as an open space. And I'm going to check that I want lists to be allowed because maybe down the line, I might want to make a guide to Compton Hill. Uh, so then I'm going to click Save Place. And when it's done, it's going to show me that I want to zoom in here just on the map real quick and make sure that that is in fact the park I'm talking about and it is. So now I can go and create my project. So I'm going to come over here, click on projects, find my start a project button, click on that. Now this page looks very intimidating, but what it's telling you is that there are actually two types of projects that you can create in iNaturalist. One is a collection project, which is what we're talking about. The other is an umbrella project, and that's when you have many projects and you want to compare them with each other. Uh, we're not really going to do that with right now, uh, and that really kind of deserves its own video. So for now, what you really need to do is just click this Get Started button. And most of these fields are fairly instinctive. So say, for example, that I'm going to have a Compton Hill Adore Park IO Blitz. So I'm going to schedule an event where I'm going to invite the public to come in and try to see how many things are living in Compton Hill. Um, if you want, you can add these, these images. I've gone ahead and downloaded some images from the park just kind of pretty stuff that I think looks nice. Uh, there is a water tower there. So there's the water tower. And then for the banner, I have these lilies. Now it's really not super important what you put in here and you can always come back later and change it. So if it doesn't look the way you want, no big deal. You can always come in and do something else. And you can also add a color scheme to your, to your um, project. I think I'm gonna go with purple just for fun. And then I'm going to put a little description in here. Now the summary is required. It does not have to be more very long. However, you can put a lot of information in here if you want to. It'll just put a read more at the bottom of it on the display. So I'm going to say um, the this project contains observations from the Compton Hill Reservoir Park Bioblitz. on July 24th, 2022. Okay. So for the sake of argument, we'll say we're going to have it that day. Then I'm going to come down here. I'm going to leave this at collection. And then this is where we really get into the filters. So again, iNaturalist is a huge database. We wanted it to only show the observations we're interested in. Now, if it's a BioBlitz or a biodiversity inventory, we don't want to exclude any tax. So we want all of the organisms to be in there, plants, animals, insects, birds, whatever. So we're not going to put anything in this uh, blank. But we are going to come here to our places and we're going to find the place we just made. And hopefully it'll just filter that right out. And there it is. Now you can add more than one place if you'd like. So if we wanted to do a bio blitz across all of the parks, we could search for all the parks and add them all one by one. But for our purposes, we just want this one. Now, include users is a place where if you're a teacher and you have students and you want to put them all in, if you want your uh, project to only contain their observations, you could put all your students' IDs in here, but that is kind of a lot of IDs to have to know ahead of time. So what a lot of teachers do instead is they use this option where you have your project, but you make it so that the only observations that it contains have to be from members who have joined it. Um, so if you click that, then you can give your students, here's the link to our project, they have to go join it, and then their observations will show. Now for a bio blitz, when it's a public event, or if you really don't need it to just be students, if you want a bio blitz from anyone that happens to be in the region, then you're going to leave this unchecked. Okay. Now the only other time that this might be handy is if you are a researcher and you have a research team and you only want their observations. That's usually where this is a little more uh, convenient and appropriate. Okay, when we get down here, we're getting into some finer details. Uh, annotations describe what life stage things are in, uh, maybe their gender, maybe whether it's evidence or, or a picture of the actual organism. Um, this filter will let you filter out uh, observations that don't meet a certain quality rating. Um, this one will let you filter out things that don't maybe include a sound file. Like say you're doing a project on birdsong and you need them to all have sound. You would want to change that. 
Um, establishment means it w is useful if you want your project to only contain native or only contain introduced species. Um, down here, this is where you can mark the difference between a bio blitz and a biodiversity inventory that's existing over a long time. Uh, if you leave this set at any, then no dates will limit what you're doing. If you're doing it on a specific date, like a bio blitz, you can click here, find the date. We said the 24th. And now it will only include observations that were made on that day. You can also set like a range of observations. So if say you're doing an event over the course of a week, you can set the start and end time here. Um, you can also have a repeating schedule of months. If you were say looking at only spring ephemerals and you want to see them, only the, the plants that are blooming uh, May and June of every year, whatever. Now down here, this section, is um, is here because iNaturalist takes very seriously its responsibility to protect endangered and threatened species. So typically, if you take a picture of a species that is endangered or threatened, the GPS location will be obscured. That is to prevent anyone from poaching them, exploiting them, going to collect the organism. However, if you're a researcher that's studying that organism, that could be kind of a problem. So you can set this up to allow members to trust you. You are going to still have to convince them to trust you, but then they can turn over that information to you as long as they're sure that you're going to be responsible with it. Uh, if you're just doing a typical schoolyard type event or a neighborhood kind of event, that's not going to be important. So you can leave that unchecked. And then finally, if you have somebody helping you and you want them to be able to come and adjust any of these, uh, you can put their username in here and then they will be admin. Now, for in my case, it's just me. So I'm going to click done. And it does take a minute, but not very long. And there we are. So there's my purple color. Here's my lily pads. Um, notice that there's a date under here. And because I have this tied to a specific date that hasn't happened yet. There is no observations currently in my project because it hasn't started yet. Um, and, but there is this lovely countdown, which is kind of neat. Um, I can go in for here and I can put in journal posts. Um, and here you can see my project requirements are laid out. There's my map. So it's all ready to go. So when July 24th rolls around and people start submitting observations, they will automatically start to appear here. Now, if I change my mind about anything, I can always come here and change it. So say, for example, I just got overwhelmed and decided having a whole bio blitz was just too much for me. So instead, I decided I wanted a long biodiversity inventory, one that was just always there so it could collect anything that people added. And so I'm going to go through here um, and I'm just going to get rid of anything relating to a date down here and set this from that date to any. And I'm going to click done. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because what I want you to see is that these projects will filter observations that are already in the system as well. So you'll notice when I've done that, since I've removed the, the date restriction, now it's showing me any observations that have ever been made in Compton Hill Reservoir, which is really cool. If you were studying a particular organism, you could just have it filter for that organism and you can see all of the observations of that organism anywhere um, that have existed in iNaturalist since it started. So this is just to give you a pretty, you know, quick idea of how you would set that up. Um, it is a lot of fun. Most of the people that I've worked with really enjoy setting these up and kind of playing with them. Uh, it's it's neat to see what comes out of it. And even better, if you are a teacher, if you do this year after year, you end up with a really nice set of data that your kids can play with. So if you have any questions about this, please don't hesitate to reach out to me through my EcoSpot. Um, but I wish you the best of luck. Thanks for joining me today and have a great night.